Hey, 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 everyone. How's everyone doing? I hope everyone's safe. I hope everybody's enjoying their Memorial Day holiday if you celebrate. Um, so today I am finally starting our next color along slash color and chat or whatever you guys would like to call it. It is going to be in the circle of life. And if you haven't been following along, this is the page that we will be doing. So everybody get your books out and we will be using Prismacolors. Now, I know I always say I don't like using them, but I know a lot of you who follow along, um, well, not a lot of you, but some of you probably don't have the same pencils I have and I know Prismacolors you know it's kind of widely used so I'm going with Prismacolors for this one so for today we are going to do um I was thinking of starting on the little cabin or not cabin the little tent island here so I, we'll do that today now I want to use, since the last color along we did was kind of a lot of browns and oranges. For this one, I kind of want to do blues and purples and, you know, greens and things like that. So, we're going to start with this here. So, the colors we'll be using, we're going to start with the, the grass. And I kind of want it to have that bluish green kind of grass um so i want to bring in some we're gonna grab some light aqua let me find that in here i do not use these often so it might take me a minute i should have did it before the video but um you know things happen so we're going to use some light aqua and then i'm going to also grab some hmm i want to say let's grab some aqua marine so we're going to do light aqua aqua marine and then for the for the darkest of the dark you guys know I like to call it the darkest of the dark. We're going to grab um, our cobalt turquoise. So let me grab that. All right. So I got my colors here. So this is what we're working with. Light aqua, aqua marine, and cobalt turquoise. You guys see those? All right. So, um... Let me sharpen them because, as you can see, they are not. So I'm going to be using um, my Tagal sharpener. Uh, I do have other sharpeners, like I have this one. This is the Prismacolor one. I use it sometimes when I can't find this one. And I also have the m and sharpener, but I usually just use that for um, my whole binds and my... Uh, what do you call them? Polychromos. But most of the time, I just grab this little pink one because this is the one that's usually on hand around. It's a good sharpener. I probably need to um, get another one because the blades might be getting a little dull soon because I use it so much. Okay. So we're going to start with the grass here. And even though Prisma colors, you know, they say you're supposed to like blend them together. I'm still going to layer because that's how I color. So I'm just going to put a light layer down. I have not used Prisma colors in this book yet. So I don't know how this is going to turn out, but we're going to hope for the best. So we're going to put a light layer down, like always. And I know some of you were saying you need to practice more with a light layer. Instead of holding your pencil down here or down here, try holding it higher. And if you hold it up higher, you can, there's, it's not so much pressure and you can get that light layer. For those of you who are struggling with putting down a light layer, 
and you don't really have any control over how hard you're squeezing the pencil. So, but for me, I can actually hold it anywhere because I have a light hand anyway when I color. So, I can pretty much hold it in the middle, at the bottom, wherever, and still get that light layer. Okay, so, there's our, our light layer. So, now, I'm going to come in and I'm gonna add some of this aquamarine and I'm gonna just come in from where um, these items are. So, well, not items, but you know, the tent and the trees and I'm gonna work my way outward. And so this, most of this is actually gonna be just kind of light. Um, it won't be so much because it's daytime, the sun is there. So it's gonna be kind of light, I hope. But we'll see, you know, we always changing stuff up and coming up with alternatives and things like that. So, go ahead and add that. And if you hear any noises in the background, um, someone's outside being a character, so just ignore them. Okay, so. I think we got a good, decent amount of that down. And so we're gonna come in with our darkest of the dark. And the sun is out, so it won't be too much shadow, but we're gonna add some, just in these little corners and crevices here. Just a little bit, like, you know, underneath the trees and the tent the bottom where you know there would be normal shadow I think um, I'm not the best at knowing where the shadows go but I have some general idea but it's not like you know the best so wherever you feel like I mean the Sun is behind all this stuff so I don't know technically it should be more shadow I think but it's fine the way it is so then I'm gonna come in with my light and I'm gonna just kind of go over all of it. And this is, I'm using kind of a medium pressure and just kind of bringing out the whole thing. I almost wanted to make this a night scene and then I seen the sun and I was like, oh, it's supposed to be daytime. But then up here at the top of the hourglass is like the moon. So I don't know, maybe we can do some cool stuff. But we're gonna start with this. All right, and I'm gonna come back in with the medium just to kind of blend out this shadow that I have so it's not so harsh, just a little bit. Just the tad, so it doesn't, so the lines can kind of look like they're going in together and not so stiff and look as if I just kind of slapped it on there. Okay, and then one more time with the light, just to get any white spaces that I may have missed or to make it look like it's more, and that's another reason why I kind of um, Prisma colors aren't really my jam because I have to. I feel like I have to go over some spaces a lot of times, and it doesn't just it doesn't give me the look I'm going for. But we'll see what what we got. I'm doing this for y'all. You guys are my people. So, okay, here we go. We got the the ground. Now, for the trees, I'm thinking I kind of want to do them. Um, kind of like a purple-ish color um, because I want these leaves to be kind of like a purple and kind of like a purple green so I, I'm, I think I'm gonna do these trees purple and so we're gonna put away our um, our blue greens we were just using and I I try to put my stuff away, you know, um, as I'm using it because 
I'll have pencils all over the place if I don't. So, for the trees, I'm thinking I want to use, um, I'm going to grab some, I'm, I'm really leaning towards this dark purple and mulberry and probably okay so we're gonna grab our black grape our dark purple and our mulberry we're gonna just go with it um i like to just kind of go with the flow when it comes to coloring most of the time it's a uh, it's on the spot. All right, so we got our dark purple, our black grape, and our mulberry. Okay, so let's go ahead and sharpen that. Sharpen these, I mean. Real quick. I never have my, my um, pencil sharpened <laughs> for you guys. Sorry. Okay, so. Bring you up a little bit. And we're gonna start with our mulberry. And we're just going to give all of these trees a, just a light layer. I hope you guys can see. I, I think that's as far as I can zoom in. So we're just giving them a layer and it's okay if you don't, um, you don't have to color the whole thing in. Just you know, just go over it a little bit just to give it some color so we know where we're going and how we're going to do this. Now, I am thinking, and also um, real quick before I go on, be careful because there are mountains here. So be careful not to color those mountains purple. I mean, we don't know if we're doing them purple or not yet, but Okay, so you got your base layer there, and that was with the mulberry. So now we're gonna come in with our dark purple. And so let me just um, grab that really quick for you guys. And also, if you haven't um, ordered the book yet, and you want to follow along, I will put my Amazon affiliate link down in the description so you guys can order it from Amazon if you want to use my link or I've been told that it is also um, available at Walmart at some Walmart so if you don't want to use my link then you can check it out at Walmart hopefully your Walmart has it okay so back to this we're gonna grab our dark purple and so I was saying I think since the Sun is behind I want the the shadows to kind of go on the long the right side of the tree so i'm going to put some of this dark purple in on the right side of each tree and so we're just going to put a little bit in make sure your pencils are kind of sharp unless you're really good at uh tackling these small details with dull pencils i'm not that great at doing it so i have to make sure my pencil's sharp um just adding some of that in there and I'm putting it on the the right side of the trees because the sun and and is coming from the back so I figured it was, it's shining you know that way uh, so it's on the right side of those trees and then these trees it will be on the left side so go ahead and just um, that's just the way I'm doing it. You are free to put your shadows wherever you like. Um, you know, you can totally ignore the fact that the sun is back there if you like. If you think it looks better, you know, another way, then go for it. You know, we, we do what we want in our coloring books. And everybody, I mean, everybody's picture is going to come out beautiful, I'm sure. I love seeing everyone's different takes on the pages. Although the last color along, no one um, 
surprisingly showed me what their birds look like when they were done. So, you know, guys, I still would like to see them. Um, my, uh, what do you call it? My Facebook group is down below. So if you have Facebook, join the group. Make sure that you answer the, the group questions and show me those birds. I want to see them. I haven't seen any ones yet. And that was kind of a lengthy color along. So, sorry, we are going in with um, our black grape now. And this is the darkest of the dark. So I'm only adding a little bit because the sun, to me, the sun is, is shining. It's a nice day. So just adding some here. And then on the other side, we're going to add it on the left side of the tree. All right. There we go. Okay. And then we're going to come back in with our mulberry. And we're going to go over the whole thing. just to blend it in and the one thing that I do like about Prismacolors is that um the color the color the range of colors that they have is amazing that I do like um you know they have some beautiful bright vibrant colors but I just don't like the way they lay down that's my issue with them and a lot of my coloring books, I just don't like the way they feel. And this coloring book, is they seem to be doing all right. But not my jam because I'm used to, you know, I'm used to polys. So it's probably just me that needs to get some, you know, some getting used to. So we'll see. We'll see. All right. Boom, there's our trees. So I don't know if you got if it's showing um my light very well, but on my end it's pretty. Let me see if I can lift you. On my end it's it's a lot vibrant. You'll see it's more vibrant than this. It looks a little dark on camera, but it's actually, you know, pretty decent. Okay, so for the bottom of the, you know, the, I guess this would be like the land, the brownish part. I'm going to come in. I want it to be like that rich brown. Like I want all the colors in here to just pop. So I'm going to bring in some burnt ochre, some terracotta, and probably, um, chocolate. So let me put my purples away. Actually, I'm going to keep these purples out because these leaves here will be the same purple. So I'm going to actually um, put them in my case. And what I do when I'm using a color and I want to come back to it, I just put them in my case the opposite direction so I know that I'm coming back to those colors. Okay, so let's go and grab the browns. Like I said, we're doing burnt ochre, terracotta, and chocolate. So there's burnt ochre, there's terracotta, and let's see if I can find chocolate. Is this chocolate? Chocolate. Okay. So let me sharpen these. Bring you guys up. Okay, here we go. Let me just sharpen this one. And I'm going to do this color along like I did the last one. So it will be in parts. Um, so everybody's not, you know, everybody has different schedules and things like that. So I want to do it in parts. So we're not all rushing and it comes out looking horrible, which happens when I rush. So we're going to come in with burnt ochre first. And you know how I do it. Light pressure. Light pressure, light pressure. Across 
across the whole thing. And we're also going to do it in these holes here where the water is coming out. So be sure to get those spots as well. We'll go ahead and just, just, just to throw down some color, get the layers going. And notice I'm not like layering a hundred times like I do with my polys either, because with these you don't really have to. So once you get the colors where you need, you can just come back in with heavier pressure. Okay, so now we're gonna come in with terracotta and we're gonna treat each part different. So this one is gonna have some coming out here and I'm gonna darken it all the way down here because there's no sun shining there. And then this one is gonna have it here because it kind of curves out. And then it's also gonna have it down here because it's behind this piece. And this one is gonna be quite different. We're gonna put some up here at the top. Don't forget this hole. The hole needs to be darker because it's the hole. So put a little bit more pressure in that hole there where the water's coming out. And then also here I feel like the camera angle today is kind of wonky. I don't know. Okay. So here. And then this one, you're going to have some here. Don't forget the hole where the water is. A little bit darker there. And this one. And I'm just, you know, I'm just lightly laying the color down. I'm gonna color all of this because the sun is behind this rock technically, so it shouldn't be too much light, right? And so there we go. And I'm still using a pretty light pressure. This brown just comes out pretty dark. Um, it pops, which is what I want. So don't need heavy pressure for this at all. It might look like it's going down, you know, with heavy pressure. But it's not. It's still light pressure. And we're coming in now with chocolate. And this is our darkest of the dark, even though it's not that dark. Um, just hit the edges with this one because I don't want too much shadow. I want most of the that terracotta to kind of pop out. So this is just to have in the darkest areas. You know how we do with our darkest of the darks. And we won't have too many darks um, like we did in the last one because, like I said, the last one was pretty, it wasn't super dark, but it wasn't very bright. So I wanted to add some colors this time that pops for this color alone. Just changing up the colors so, you know, we try to use all our stuff and all the colors and things. Okay. So now I'm going to come back in with terracotta just to bring it out. And then because now we know where the darkest of the dark is, you can come back with your terracotta and make it pop. And just kind of go over it where you want it. If you don't want it to be like as bright as mine or as vivid as mine, I should say then you can skip this part and just come back in with your burnt ochre if you want that more of that color to show. But I wanted more of the terracotta to show. So I'm going to now come back in with the burnt ochre and I'm going to go over it all. Go over the holes too so they can be dark. And just go over it. Light pressure. Blend it all in like we always do. And boom. Now, if you want it to be a little bit darker, then just add more chocolate. If you feel like, um, you know, the darkest of the dark isn't standing out a lot to you, you can come back in with chocolate or pick a darker brown. Um, you can pick a darker brown or even go with like a gray. How I showed you guys, you could take gray and kind of like bring it in for your shadows. Um, 
you can do that if it's not dark enough but I'm just gonna come back in with a little chocolate because it disappeared a little bit and in, in the middle of me coming in with that burnt ochre and so I'm gonna add a little bit in these holes too and so when you add the chocolate back in now you can see where your shadows are because it kind of disappeared on us. So there's that. Now we have um, the little tent I was thinking of doing kind of like, um, like an orange, but then I didn't want this page to like fall into like the autumn kind of theme. So and I know I want the mountains to be kind of like a pinkish purple, purple and pink, kind of like um, ombre. We know it probably won't look ombre, but purple and pink. So I'm not sure about the tint yet. So let's do the mountains first, since we know what colors we go going for with the mountains. So let's put our browns back. Now for the mountains, I want a light pink. So let's look for the light, lightest pink we have. And I'm thinking either deco peach, because that's pretty light, or deco pink. I'm not sure, which, I think I wanna go with the deco peach. Because it's more of a, it, it's more of the color I'm looking for. So we're gonna do that. And then we're also going to do, um, I, I, I really want to lean towards lilac. So deco peach and lilac, we're going to start with those two. So go ahead and grab that. And we're going to grab lilac here. Lilac's pretty sharpened already, but this deco peach is not. So I want the peach at the top. So we're just gonna go, we're not gonna layer the whole thing. We're just gonna put the deco peach at the top of the mountain where you want it, where you want it to stop, that's where you would stop. I'm not gonna cover the whole mountain. So you got the deco peach and I'm gonna put a little bit here, right? So I can't zoom in anymore, but I stopped at about right there. So you can see the peach I stopped right here and for this one I stopped right here and this one I only did a little bit because this is the bottom of the mountain so we're gonna come in with our lilac and we're gonna do the bottom half and we're just gonna come up And then once we have the the desired look, we'll come in with a, a darker purple to kind of darken up the bottom, or maybe not. We'll see what it looks like when we're done because that's how we do things around here. Sometimes we add, sometimes we don't. So I'm gonna come back with this um, deco peach and I'm gonna kind of go over where they meet in the middle. And I'm gonna have a, a medium hand with this one because I kind of want them to blend together and just kind of mix them together so they can have, you know, that blend. And so I think I want the the pink-ish to be a little bit darker. So I'm gonna add some blush pink. If I can find it, let's see, pink rose. My Prismacolor, they're in order-ish, but um, sometimes I can't find what I'm looking for. So blush pink, where would that be at? Um, oh, that's chestnut, hang on. I'm looking guys, I'm looking. I see hot pink, pink rose. Are we missing some colors? Oh, ah, I see it's back here with the uh, skin tones. All right. I had some kind of theory going on. Okay, so going to add some blush pink. And I'm going to add it right in here 
And I actually think I want this whole mountain to be blush pink, except for at the very top. So this is what I mean when I say we kind of just test things out because sometimes the color looks good on our on our swatch book and then when we actually put it down it doesn't look the way we want it to. So test it out. Alright, I'm going to come back in with this lilac and I'm going to go with a medium hand since I know where I want it. Now we got some ombre-ish looking mountains. And then add add that um, deco peach at the top, just to blend it in with the blush pink. And there we go. So we got like you know the little ombre. Looks nice. Looks nice. It actually probably looks a lot better. Um, once you're doing it, you'll see. For some reason, it does not look the same. Maybe if I do the light like this, okay, you can kind of see it a little bit now. It's much brighter than when I have the light just kind of back here. But it's back there so that it's not shining in my face. Okay, so um, we just have the tint and the sun. Obviously the sun is gonna be a nice bright yellow. Um, I don't know if I'm thinking like I want it to be kind of a, I'm thinking lemon yellow. Um, not sure, but I do know that I think I do want this tint to be kind of orange, but I don't think I want it to be like a bright orange. So I am going to go ahead and go with, uh, we're going to start with goldenrod. Hmm. Yep. We're going to go goldenrod and mineral orange and i know those are probably colors you guys don't normally see mixed together but we're going to do it anyway so let me grab my goldenrod and if i can find mineral orange here we go and it's also cool because with prismacolor sometimes you don't need a three color blend and you could just roll with two and that would be enough but we're gonna see if i wanted um yeah, any darker than that. So we're gonna come in with our goldenrod and we're just going to put a light layer. Here we go. Light layer, right? So the orange actually looks nice. Sorry, I keep hitting the camera. Okay, now remember the sun is kind of behind this here but there's dots i guess that's supposed to be where the darkest area is so we're just gonna go with that because sometimes that's just what you want to do so we're gonna have the dark coming down coming up i mean and then for this one it looks like it's coming across the top some kind of weird way and kind of like back here a little bit All right, and so then I'm actually thinking I want to add something a little bit lighter than that goldenrod. So um, we're gonna go with some yellow ochre actually, because I kind of like the little highlight that it left there and I kind of don't want it to disappear too much. And if I put too much of that goldenrod, it's just gonna turn you know, completely orange. So we wanna have some depth here. So we're gonna add a little bit of this yellow ochre That way, the yellow ochre can be our new highlight. So we're gonna go over the whole thing. And then we can bring back in our goldenrod. And that's gonna kinda darken it back up a little bit. Right? And then the mineral orange is now our darkest of the dark. So we can actually go in with a medium hand on this part here and here. And then for this part, just go, you know, kind of medium. Don't don't push too hard because we don't want it too orange, if that makes any sense. Right, and then we can go back over with our 
yellow ochre over the whole thing just to tone it down. Okay. Now for this nice um, sun here, which is the last part we need to do for today. And I want it to be, at first I was thinking neon and then I was like, no, nah, that's not really gonna go. So we're going to do a canary yellow. And that's what color our sun is gonna be. So grab your canary yellow and just fill in the sun. We're not gonna add any depth to it or anything like that because at the end, um, for the last video, and I know I haven't done the background video for the eagle yet, but for the last video of this one, once it's all colored in, I'll go and add like, um, like if I wanna add some glitter gel pen or watercolor and make the sun sparkle or, you know, things like that. We'll do it at the end because it, I don't wanna do it now because I wanna like keep to the Prismacolor pencils because not everybody has watercolor and things like that. So that'll just be a video on its own when we add the extras if we want. Um, so that's it for our little island here. And I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna zoom out and bring you guys, bring it up. Hopefully you guys can see it. So that's what we got going on here. So to give you an idea, um, hopefully next time, the, the lighting will be better but since the trees are purple these leaves we're gonna go with like a purple um the you know the branches will probably be these colors that we used for this and there's some birds in here so maybe we'll do the you know we'll try to keep to this same color palette um i'm not sure what color the water should be just yet so if you guys have any ideas that you want the water to be or the flowers um let me know uh we're doing this together so you know i'm not the only one coloring here you guys are also a part of it so if you have ideas drop them down in the comments let me know um also if you are new to my channel thank you for stopping by i am gonna try to take time at the end of my videos to thank my new subscribers my new watchers, even if you aren't subscribed yet and you just, you know, watch my video and you like my video, um, I want to take time to thank you guys because the more you like my videos and the more, you know, you subscribe, hit like and all that good stuff, the more my video will be out there and the more people will see it. And it might be someone out there who's looking for like new color alongs or new videos or new new ways to color things like that and they might not see my video if you guys don't like subscribe things like that it might not come across to them so liking and subscribing helps kind of you know get my videos to pop up on people's recommended channels and things like that so i do want to thank you because you are helping me and you're also helping other colorists as well so with that being said, um, this is the end of part one, and I will see you guys for part two, which will we'll probably hit up these leaves, or we can finish up here and work our way down. Um, we'll see. So I'll see you guys in the next video, and again, thank you for watching. See you next time.